Okay, Don, welcome. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, we're here for the symposium. Right. Uh, actors uh, and agents. Mm -hmm. um, this year it's on uh, social housing, right. housing the social. Uh, you're here through your academic background as a researcher. Um, maybe just to give a little bit of a context, uh, um, from what viewpoint uh, are you contributing to the symposium? And specifically, uh, how do you think your position as an academic can affect uh, decisions about commissioning or uh, the building of social housing? I think my contribution will be to bring in the question of uh, who is in housing and who there is housing for. What kinds of uh, housing does not exist that ought to exist? And I'm particularly going to focus on the US, which is in many ways the forefront of destroying any kind of notion of a socialized housing system. So when you say what kind of housing doesn't exist, can you sort of elaborate on that? Housing that is available for the poorest in our society, that allows for uh, people to uh, live a relatively autonomous life, uh, one in which they have a great deal of control over their own, uh, their own interactions, their own lives, their own ways of being. Is that largely a, a social uh, issue, an economic one, all of the above? It's a, both a social and an economic issue. Uh, it's an economic issue in the sense that there is no, uh, in, in many parts of the world now, there is no public housing sector. It's a social issue in that housing has become a commodity more than a right, and it needs to be a right more than a commodity. Do you, what kind of role do you think uh, culture, uh, more specifically artistic practice, uh, can play in this uh, discussion? I think it can play a whole range of roles, uh, from bringing to light key issues around uh, questions of housing for all, and uh, as well as um, imagining new ways of living, new ways of being, uh, through uh, anything from um, installations to documentaries to so, and so forth. And how do you see a collaboration actually uh, in this, for example, between the academic field, the artistic field, and eventually uh, the, the, the field that has the mandate to change matters of social housing? To give just one example, in the city that I live in, Syracuse, New York, there's uh, an ongoing collaboration between residents in a particular district and some of the uh, filmmakers, and particularly um, uh, writers in the city of Syracuse, uh, to find ways to bring um, residents' uh, stories uh, to light, uh, to show new ways of understanding who lives in particular parts of the city, who lives in the empty spaces of particular parts of the cities, and then to bring those really right into the faces of uh, decision makers and, uh, for that matter, other residents within our city. And, and is, this, is this possible? Uh, like in the Netherlands, I imagine, in the United States, you have the same situation in which the, the political and economic disinvestment in, in this area is, is quite actual, quite acute. There's been a remarkable disinvestment across the United States in uh, any kind of affordable housing, uh, as well as in whole neighborhoods, uh, whole groups of people and so forth. Uh, academics have a particularly important role to play in this, not only because we uncover how these processes happen, but also we can figure out how to directly intervene, intervene with our institutions. So the university that I'm at has taken a very active role in trying to not just understand the processes of disinvestment, reinvestment, uneven development, but to actually address it by uh, engaging in targeted, um, targeted interventions as well as investments in particular parts of the, the city that can lead to problems of gentrification. And one of the key roles we have as members of our institution is to find ways to assure that it doesn't. Can, can you give an example of one of these engagements? We have a, uh, we have a project called the Near West Side, which is the Near West Side Initiative, which is geared toward a uh, long since disinvested neighborhood within Syracuse. Uh, it's largely Latino and it is uh, increasingly poor, uh, but it's also one that is uh, well situated in relationship to the rest of the city. It's uh, one in which the university has uh, um, long since actually been 
has, has long been ignorant until very recently. It's now brought a whole set of initiatives, including improving playgrounds and, and parks in the neighborhoods, finding ways to transform housing. Uh, architects are engaged in uh, experiments with uh, green building and so forth. There's a huge amount of money, in fact, being put into the neighborhood with a fair amount, although it's far from perfect, a fair amount of uh, resident uh, direct involvement, engagement, and directing of the project. Uh, a lot of these types of projects that you're describing now, um, uh, I mean, th these aren't uh, new uh, urgencies. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The situation has been dire for, for quite a while. Um, arguably, can go back quite long. Can you maybe give a little bit of a, your take on uh, the, the, the condition we find ourselves in now and how this actually, uh, how this relates or how this relates to a sort of more historical uh, view on this notion of social housing and housing the social? It's been um, more than 150 years now since Engels famously said that the bourgeoisie has no solution to the housing problem except to move it about. That is still the case because the problem, in fact, isn't the bourgeoisie, it's capitalism. Uh, as to the degree that housing is commodified, to the degree that housing is a market, uh, then it will never have a solution to housing the social. So that long history has always been there. It has been ameliorated at various times through uh, interventions of the state, for example, through social movements, through the creation of cooperative housing, uh, through squatting, through a whole range of other practices. Uh, and those kinds of practices are ever more urgent now as social welfare states are being uh, dismantled across the industrialized world, uh, and uh, particularly as, um, as the whole financial system and any idea um, and any ability for the financial system to provide uh, funding for housing for uh, those who aren't already wealthy has been, uh, well, destroyed. And, and the role of regulation in this? Do you see any uh, hope at the end of the tunnel? I wish I saw hope at the end of the tunnel. Uh, coming from the United States, it's very difficult to see hope at the end of the tunnel. It's quite remarkable in the last three years how absent any uh, debate and discussion over housing has been, even though it is very much a housing crisis that we are in the middle of. There should be a role for regulation. Um, every city in the states, every state in the United States have regulations about developers having to create a certain amount of affordable housing and so forth. They're rarely enforced. Uh, they're usually, it's usually too little. Uh, and uh, those sorts of practices need to be contested and countered. In the United States, there has not been a single new dollar uh, contributed toward, new public dollar contributed to public housing since 1996. Wow. That's quite a statistic. <laughs> Um, and um, your position as an academic and the mm -hmm. research that you do, um, could you maybe uh, position this in sort of an international field? How do you, you, you mentioned examples of the United States, I imagine you are uh, up to date on, on some exam examples on a more international level. Um, how do you see it sort of across the board? Do you, is there any tendency that you can discern? One of my particular interests uh, are questions of homelessness and particularly the uh, degree to which um, homeless people have to live their lives in public in a way that those of us who are housed do not. In the United States, there's been a, a war against homeless people since the 1980s. It led to a whole series of anti-homeless laws, other kinds of anti-homeless initiatives, whose main goal is to merely make them disappear. I think that those practices are beginning to be replicated around the world. I've worked with others who have shown that this is in fact the case with big differences, but with important differences, but still being replicated in Hungary, in Russia, uh, even in Sweden, in, um, in uh, Great Britain, in Korea, and in Japan. Uh, in each of these, the same sort of uh, practices of wiping out shelters, wiping out uh, affordable housing, wiping out other possibilities to be housed uh, for homeless people are going on at the same time that new punitive regimes are being put into place uh, to make uh, the ability to live outside of housing all the more difficult. And that's a, uh, a quite an acute uh, situation, uh, one that mm -hmm. is very visible. Right. Um, do you maybe have a, uh, an example of a sort of uh, uh, a situation or a case uh, where th it's exactly that visibility that makes the problem quite difficult. People that are sort of on that, that boundary uh, that, that's quite tense mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the situ situation of social housing and, and the, the, the nature of housing the social. That's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, if, I mean, if there's no answer, you can give it to me later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think, uh, are, would you rather, are, are you trying to get an answer that gets at some interventions that have been uh, helpful in bringing this to light? Or yeah, maybe I'm also looking to see, uh, I mean, this, this symposium is, mm -hmm. is, is dealing with a social issue. Right. But we're trying to find to see how that social issue uh, can be helped and mm -hmm. is maybe also positioned within a cultural field. Right. And it's usually, uh, the cultural field usually concentrates on uh, those areas where visibility is required. Right. So that's why I asked the question sure, to sort of sure. see, yeah. see where that tension is. Right. One of the uh, crucial issues facing people who are homeless and, cr and facing the condition of homelessness, which is a social condition, a societal condition, not just a condition of individuals, uh, is uh, a real um, uh, contradiction at, at the heart of it, which is the contradiction of visibility. Homeless people in most cities are, must live their lives in highly visible ways, but are expected to be invisible at the same time. Interventions that bring that contradiction to light have been incredibly crucial in showing um, just how, uh, how appalling dominant society's uh, approach to homeless people have been. So there have been a series of interventions in cities like uh, Berkeley, San Francisco, Oakland, and California, Los Angeles as well. I'll talk tomorrow a little bit about Sacramento, uh, but also in, in New York, in the city that I live in, which is a quite small city in, in southern cities, and then in Europe as well, particularly in, in Great Britain, that have shown the ways in which it's the very visibility of homeless people that have made them criminals. Uh, it's not what they do, it's not how they behave, it's not who they are, it's their vi visibility. This has often been done by activists, artists, and others um, turning the lens back on the housed society and showing all of those things that they do, that we do, uh, in private that homeless people must do in public. Uh, so through photography, through film, through painting, uh, through um, street performances and so forth, which engage, uh, which show the way that everyday life must be visible for homeless people, must be visible in public for homeless people. And it's precisely that visibility that makes the rest of us uncomfortable and then leads to us trying to criminalize them. Is there a, <clears throat> is there a political uh, potential in the position of the, of the artist? And if so, what do you think that may be? I think there's a huge political potential. Uh, and unfortunately, it's, uh, it runs in both directions. Uh, because uh, you know, there's nothing necessarily progressive uh, or uh, political about art. Um, but uh, on a more progressive and political side, that ability to show us our everyday lives in ways that uh, we know but don't always recognize uh, can be vital for um, leading us to understand where to politically intervene, those of us who are not artists, for example, uh, where to engage our research for those of us who do, do that s sort of work. Uh, and so that, that ability to make us see differently, I think, uh, is absolutely vital. Okay.